So hi everyone. So again, now we're going to discuss about how do we create the first integration flow. So now let's in case if you don't have any kind of experience or if you haven't built any iFlow, so I think this will give you some kind of a steps how to create your first iFlow. So now I think it's time to quickly go into the system. Let me just quickly go into the system here. So now here, if if you see the different different kind of options we have, discover design. So in a design, I've already have one. Uh, one of the packet which is zz underscore custom integration flows I'll quickly step inside a package. We are going to all the exercises creating a package I close everything from scratch But now I just want to quickly show you how how do we actually create your integration flow here? Now for this particular part what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to click on the edit button here I'm going to go to the artifact tab so now we have a different different kind of options uh, as a RF type, okay, uh, which is available like script collection, integration flow, or data API, value mapping, and a message mapping. If you look at into any Cloud Foundry environment, there are these options get increased. Okay, so you have other options available for you. But now for your first integration flow, I'm just going to click on your uh, uh, integration flow. I'm going to give a name, I think Z first integration iFlow. So again, this becomes a key identifier. So there is an ID which get auto-populated. Again, uh, I would highly recommend that uh, just try to give the proper description in case if you have proper sender receiver system, you please provide that part because it makes your uh, I flow a little more readable. Okay, so that should be a, one of the good practices which you should be using it out. I'll quickly click on OK here. Now, once I click on OK, so your iFlow is created here. So now, if I just come here onto this particular slide again, if I go, so there are a few steps which I have divided my first iFlow creation. Okay, so it is your create iFlow. Deploy it out, monitor it out. Again, they're like very holistic words, okay? High level deploy, monitor. But it's very important that from a startup perspective, you understand that, okay, I need to create an iFlow, I need to deploy it, and then I can only monitor it out. So for this particular information, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to again come back to the system. I'm going to click on the Z integration underscore flow. I'll step inside this particular iFlow. Now, first time when you land to this particular screen, so what happens is you have only very subset of option which is available here. Okay, so you click on edit part. Okay, now what will happen is once you once you do edit, now you'll be able to add or make a change to your iFlow. Now, this is how your, uh, uh, your first screen look like, like something if you're creating from scratch. Now, here on top, you have some kind of a palette which is which has different different kind of options. I would highly encourage you guys if you are coming out for the first time, your your first thing should be looking at what are the different different kind of options it provide. Because based on a different different kind of options, you will be able to see how extensive this tool has become. Ask me, I'm teaching this particular course from last four years. Okay. The tool, the layout, the functionality has been changed left and right. Okay. And SAP has actually SAP has actually put a lot of good efforts in 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 providing this uh, tools or features as such. So now here I'll just quickly go through the features, like or or in the palette, what are the different different kind of options we have? Like in a process, we have exceptions to process, integration process, local integration process. We have different different kind of events are also uh, there. Now this events helps you to might be uh, schedule a job into the cloud integration. Again, there's a concept of a timer, which we are going to look at in the later stage. Then we have the mapping, which is the heart of any integration tool guys. Whenever we are talking about a message mapping or a mapping, it's a heart, okay? Because it's going to actually transform your data from your sender to receiver. Then we have your message transformation, like your content modifier, converter, decoder. So there are different different kind of options we have. Then again, in case if you want to make any kind of external local calls, then in case if you have to do any kind of routing, if you have to do any kind of security, data stores, or persistence, 
and then we have a validator. So there is a list of options which are available here and I would highly recommend you that please start exploring this option. Now, in, from a script perspective, everyone says that, Sam, what are the different, different kind of script SAP provides? So we have this Groovy script, we have the JavaScript. So please, if you are uh, here, look at the options. What is converters? What are the different, different options, decoder? Because when you know what kind of uh, capabilities this tool has, then only you'll be able to actually widen your approach to solve a complex problem as such. Now today what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a first basic eye flow for you. I can just do a lot of permutation combination, but I don't want to just confuse you by putting a lot of different, different things. I think the first thing is whenever we have a sender. So once you select this get highlighted by blue. Okay. And then I'm going to connect to the start part here. Okay. So now here we have different, different kind of adapters which come up again, which is a very critical functionality of any middleware tool. If I'm talking about uh, that with, with the which different different kind of application will be able to connect it on. So now you see we have AMQP, which is for your messaging queuing protocol, Ariba, AS4, which is applicable C statement 4, FTP, HTTPS, IDOC, Kafka, Mail, OData, Process Direct, SFTP. The list goes on, guys. The list goes on. So for this particular use case, I'm just going to use simply the HTTPS. I'm just going to drop a message packet or I can use even your SOAP tool. Okay, so I can might be use here um, SOAP UI tool or HTTPS, anything as such. I can just quickly choose HTTPS for this use case. Again, once you uh, choose any kind of HTTPS, so there is below there is a configuration of this properties okay whatever we have adapter choose we have some kind of properties which get enable us for us for all the adapters there are different different kind of a specific properties we have it now let's say i want to see what is the option uh, available for this https adapter again for the first time guys don't run just understand what is adapter type transport protocol direction description if you want to give it anything manually here then connection condition now the beauty of cloud integration tool is that now anytime if i hover over to it now let's in case if i don't have any idea what this particular field is going to do so this is kind of a quick helps which opens it up for me it says very clearly the address field must begin with a forward slash and can include alphanumeric values and a spatial correctors for example forward slash test forward slash one two three now, this is like it tells you how to define an address for this particular uh, iFlow. So I'm just going to use the same convention. I'm going to use Z test. I'm going to use the Z test integration. I've just given one name. Then again, authorization role, uh, user role. This checkbox for the timing, I'll just avoid it up. Uh, I'll just uncheck it because again, this is for cross site request for jury attack. This is a sample iFlow or the like a demo iFlow. So I'm just going to uncheck this particular part. Then we have the conditions here, like what exactly is the body size in case if you're still not sure, again, it just tells you the maximum body size in MB. So this is how you can quickly define your sender sender system using your HTTPS adapter. Now again, here a bonus tip. Anytime in case if you're not sure about kind of any kind of functionality, what you can do is you can just click on this help button. So once it, you do a help in your cloud integration document, even it just points out to the specific location where this information is stored and you can actually follow that steps, how to actually configure your HTTPS adapter. Okay, so now might be this is how your our URL will come up dot com then HTTP hello. So this is again this kind of information is very very helpful. And in this course also I'm going to talk about different different kind of a trips and tricks uh, which you can actually use uh, while building your integration flow and you have like right set of a knowledge. So now let's in case SAP has started making changes or might be building new functionalities. Okay, so how you can just make sure that you are updated with the right set of knowledge. So this help is very, very important. I would highly recommend that anytime if you're not sure for all the properties, okay, there would be this kind of a help will be there. Click on this and just get your information as such.
Now this is the one thing. Now what I can do is might be I can just uh, uh, put any kind of a content modifier. In case if you don't know content modifier, this is being used for your message transformation part. Okay. So any any kind of information here, if you just look at header, property, message bodies, there is there is a lot of uh, knowledge we have. Okay, I'm just going to just overwrite whatever the coming message with my own tag. Okay. Everything is okay. Keep learning. Okay. So whatever the message come up, I just want to show you how we can actually uh, override this part. Now, once I've done this particular bit, now what I need to do is now I've created an integration flow, very straightforward, very simple. I am just going to receive a message which is coming from my sender system. And in this case, I'm going to use a postman. Then I'm just going to overwrite my message body with a simple text. That's it. And then once I have done this changes, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to do a save. Okay. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to actually deploy it out. Okay. So you have option of deploy. So once you've created your iFlow, you need to deploy it out also. Okay. So once you need to deploy it, what you're going to do is I'm just going to quickly click on deploy. Okay. So now this has started running it out. Again, guys, in case if you have like seen this tool previous back, again, now SAP has started giving a lot of functionalities here. Now, again, if I just click on uh, outside somewhere, this high flow, you have this option in the global properties of this integration flow, which is the deployment status, which just talks about okay if if this is deployed or not as such here okay so again guys we are like very clear here we have created an iflow we have not we have started clicking on deploy now once this particular iflow is deployed so what we need to see is we just need to see that uh, uh, how can we actually execute and see the message are pushing correctly into the system or not so for that particular part again we are just going to look at into the system so what I'm going to do here is I'm, I have just copied this integration flow name. Uh, now, once you deploy your iFlow, so we have this different different kind of options which is available. So we have the option of monitor where you will be able to actually monitor our messages. Okay, monitor our messages or now let's in case if you want to see if your iFlow is deployed or not, we do have that option available. So if you don't want to use a shortcut, if you're for the first time, you want to explore more, just click on the monitor part. Here we have the option of manage integration content. Let's just load it out. Again, it, it has a lot of different different kind of options there in the system, like your uh, integration flows, manage your integration content, manage security. So we do have this lot of options which we are going to discuss in a later stage. So once I click on all, so here I'm just going to put my iFlow name as such, which is the Z first integration flow. Now you see this is started running. Okay, so this is started. Now there's an endpoint which has been generated based on the address which I have given it out. It has prefixed with HTTP based on my adapter. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna quickly copy this URL. I'm going to enable it out for other mode like trace might be for the time being. And I'm going to click on monitor these details. Again, when we're going to the course, we are going to discuss this particular part in lens as such, that how things work out. But what I'm going to do here is now let's in case if I want to simulate a request from a postman tool, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go to the postman tool. I'm going to just put my path. Okay. Uh, let me just get some uh, payload also so that if I have a payload, what I can do is I can just pass the similar body. Let me let me just get that part here. I'm sure there would be something here. Yeah, I have a body here. So I'm going to go to the body part here. I can just pass even this any 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 uh, any sample XML. I can actually send it out. I can just send this particular XML also. That will also work out for me. Uh, let me. So 
when I'm talking about our endpoint, so this is the address of this, I'm going to go to the body part. I'm going to put raw. I'm going to put it as an XML. Okay, so this is my request, which I'm going to push it to the uh, our cloud integration system. And guys, going forward for this particular post, uh, don't worry about it. I'm going to provide you all the XML digital files so that you can actually practice it out also. Okay. So now I hope things are clear. So we have already an endpoint for an artifact or for an integration flow. And I'm going to send a request uh, to that particular integration flow. Any any sample XML. Now here, if you are not familiarized with the Postman tool, we are going to use authorization. I'm already going to use a basic auth from here to send my message packet. Now I already have the credentials maintained for the particular system. What I'm going to do here is simply I'm just going to send a request. And then what you see here is that that message which we have passed from our cloud integration system, which is everything is okay. Keep learning. So if I go here on to my system in CPI and I click on refresh, you will see a message has been completed. Okay. And if I click on the trace part of it, you will see a lot of different, different kind of details which has been uh, will be able to see it out here. So this tool is very, very flexible. You will see a lot of different, different kind of information here. So just for to be very specific, because in this particular course, we are going to discuss everything in detail as such. Okay. Even why this, this, if you look at the start message, it looks like a blank part. And here it's like, like, uh, it's like, it's, it looked like this is completed or this is a field message. Everything has a logic guys, nothing SAP has put it simply. So now in case, because uh, for the sake of our first indication flow, if I really want to validate if something is coming properly or not, if I click on the step of content modifier, click on a message content. If I go here onto the payload part, you will be able to see whatever the payload we have pushed from the postman, we are able to receive it out. And in the same step, I think we have just overwrite uh, our message because below you will be able to see the configuration also what you did. We wrote the result, everything is okay. So it means that our message has been or whatever the functionality we have desired to achieve, we are able to we are able to actually achieve that particular part. So I think this is one of the most simplest and common example how you can create your first integration flow into the system. Because now let's say in case if you want to play around with other things, okay, now might be now let's say if you want to extend it out for the different different functionality, everything is possible. Everything is possible here, guys. Okay, so uh, again, so what we did, we created an iFlow, we deployed it and we simulated from the outside and we was able to actually monitor in the system. So these are the three different different ends into the cloud integration system. So yes, this is the information we have for your creating your first integration flow.